welcome to my channel. I have some very sad news. My Canon 5D Mark II is no more, and is broken beyond repair. Canon no longer make the parts for older models, so companies such as Wex Photographic cannot fix certain DSLR models. This has forced me to reconsider my replacement options. I'm here today in a stunning woodland with pockets of pine trees. This place very much reminds me of the Cairngorms in Scotland and is quite a hidden gem. I'm yet to really delve into the depths of this forest and want to take you along the journey with me to explore this magical woodland and see what forest compositions are on offer. After much deliberation, I've decided to purchase the Canon R5 mirrorless camera. And during this video, I'll be sharing with you my thoughts on upgrading your gear and the Canon R5 in general. Now I know this is a big jump from an older model DSLR to one of the newest camera models on the market. There will be dramatic differences, but the reason for the upgrade are unique to me and might be different for others. For me, landscape photography is about the experience. Immersing yourself in nature and capturing its beauty. So we do have some challenging conditions to work with today. After waiting out the rain in my car, we've got some sunshine, but that can make it really challenging in composing your shots. We have our polarizer on. Reason being we have a polarizer in the forest is that it brings out those luscious green colors. It helps get rid of the glare. We've got a sunny day, so this will help with the reflection on the leaves. I use the Nisi True Color Polarizer, which I found is really um, good at bringing out those colors. Next is looking at your composition. So what drew me to this initially was the fallen tree on the floor. You've got the main subject of this luscious green tree and you've got these pines either side which seem to balance the image. So I'll turn you guys around so you can see what I'm talking about. So composition, we are here set up and above you can see you've got this branch here on the floor that's fallen. And then beyond that here, you've got your composition. So the tree here is my main subject. The tree running across is my sort of leading line. And then you've got these trees here. I think this one is what's balancing it out. Settings wise, we're at one fifth of a second, which is perfect. We don't have any wind coming through. The shutter speed balances with the other settings so that I'm allowing that light into the camera. I'm at f8 that gives me the best dynamic range for this camera for this lens any lower than that you may get a little bit of softness in the foreground and the background so f8 is kind of your base um, for landscape images and an iso 200 and that's this image ready framed up first one complete and so far i'm really enjoying using this camera Before we head off to our second composition, sit back and enjoy a little bit of nature to boost those serotonin and dopamine levels. Studies suggest exposure to the outdoors and seeing images of nature enhances these chemicals in the brain, which help balance mood. Put your phone on silent, take a screen break and soak up some nature goodness. a little bit old now so 
why the R5? I have a lot of notes here. It's quite nice. It's quite a nice light for my face. Maybe I'll just keep this here and look down. <laughs> no, I do know what I need to say. So the R5, what a bit of kit. The reason why I've chosen to go to the uh, Canon R5 mirrorless is because a few reasons, and I won't bore you with the specific details because I do have a blog on my website at susannamary.com which has everything on of the reasons why I've decided to go for this particular um, brand, um, particular type of camera and um, the specifics about what's on the market. So if you want to have a look check out the blog just to save yourself a bit of time here now I'm just going to go straight to the main points and then we'll carry on shooting and see what compositions there are. So the first reason is 45 megapixels this camera boasts from um, 45 megapixels, which is really good for printing. As I've said to you guys recently, I really want to start printing my work and I'm shooting for the future. So that if I ever have images in a shop one day, they'll be printed to high quality. Next is the dynamic range. So when shooting, I want to be able to shoot in uh, low light conditions and have a lot of recovery in those shadows. So you've got 15 stops of dynamic range, which is really good. And it just means that if I'm ever going handheld, then I will have a lot more play uh, in the images. And then the last thing is image stabilization within the camera. So you have a thing called IBIS, which is a great technology, it's stabilization within the camera body. I'm not going to be able to carry tripods, more kit sometimes, and I'm going to want to be able to snap and go. IBIS allows you to do that. It means I might not have to carry a tripod. I could be carrying other things, little baby. So it's going to be really hard um, to carry that extra gear. So that's why I've made this choice to go for a camera that has IBIS built in. And that's pretty much it really. Just keeping up to date with the times and um, mirrorless in general. It seems to be the direction that things are going in. Uh, I did want to have an up-to-date uh, camera and I'm fearful that if I was to go down the DSLR range um, it may be that they're not serviceable in the future, who knows. And one of the other points I wanted to make was how do you guys feel about upgrading and if it makes you a better photographer? My opinion is no. If you were to upgrade your kit, get the new gear, it won't instantly make you a better photographer. However, on the flip side, if it's easier for you to go out and take pictures, if your workflow is faster, if you're not doing as much processing, if um, you're able to snap easily, and over a long term time, you would then be able to improve. So a little bit of a juxtaposition answer there that no, upgrading's not gonna make me better, but I do feel like I've reached my sort of limit now with my previous camera. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Does it make you a better photographer? or not. Hmm. Off to the next composition. Essential bit of kit. Right. Just throw it on the floor, it's fine. <laughs> so our next composition. 
Here in the woodland, you've got these pine trees either side and a little walkway. As you go through the winding paths, it's really drawing of the eye and invites you in to go further. I really like that and I want to capture an image that represents that. So you have this leading curvature line here as it goes up. Then you have the trees either side, which help frame the image. Now I know this is sort of a typical forest shot, but with this one I quite like that you have these pockets of these little trees here either side and there's one behind me just here and it helps break it up because I find pine trees can be quite uniform and you do want something else in amongst the woodland to break it up a little bit and I suspect during autumn these little trees are going to turn beautifully. Let's spin you around and get the settings. So one thing I found is it's important to check what white balance you're shooting at. This one is obviously really cold, daylight, shade, cloudy, and we're looking at shade here. I think it's the most favorable and uh, warm colors I quite like. Next is checking that everything is in focus so I can move this around, make sure that it's in focus and adjust the focus point if needed. You can go in even further if you need to. Once you're out of that, make sure you turn your polarizer. So if I just crank up my ISO slightly so you can see what I'm talking about. So now you have your composition ready. The last thing for you to do is to change your polarizer. So you have here the glare, which is on the leaves. And as you turn it, you get that nice warmth and it removes the reflections from the leaves, as you can see. We're shooting in very harsh daylight today. Settings wise for these images, I've been shooting around F8, ISO 400, one fourth of a second. But let me know what you guys think of this image. I'll pop it on the screen now for you. Just a couple of learning points here, guys. So there's a lot of softness and movement in the right hand side where the wind was moving the leaves. So in the future, I would check in field to make sure that there's no motion blur and I would increase my shutter speed to make sure we freeze frame those leaves as the wind comes through. A little bit of learning here to take away. Hopefully that helps you guys in the future too. And that's the end of this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and found it useful and a little bit more of a step up in my photography and my filming. I want to give you guys good content and I'm really looking forward to shooting with this as the season changes. But thanks for following and watching my video. See you in the next. Take care.